don't know who told me to wear lip gloss and my hair always gets stuck to my mouth. What is going on you guys? It's Yvette and I'm back. I'm mentally better. <laughs> uh, nursing school is over and I have graduated from Pace's ABSN and I can't believe I'm saying that out loud, but it's true. I did it, it's over. And now I'm in NCLEX land and it's a whole different beast. But I was dying to just get in my little sweater and in my lounge clothes and just sit here and talk to you guys about what has been going on, what I've been up to, I haven't posted in two months. And it's been, it's been awesome. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I think that my experience has taught me a lot and I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. You guys have millions of questions and I am ready to answer them all in this video. As you can tell from the title, we're gonna be talking about frequently asked questions that I get based on you guys that have found me on YouTube and go on to my Instagram and just start DMing away. I just wanna start by saying thank you so much to everyone who is DMing me. You guys have no idea how like special it makes me feel that you guys have found me on YouTube and like had the comfort and confidence to feel like hey i can email this girl or I, I can dm her and ask her questions like i want to be relatable for you guys and i want you guys to be able to like go into my dms like as if i'm your friend and ask away everything i moved to the tri-state area from florida and i've told you guys uh, like this before when you guys are like oh i'm sorry i'm asking so many questions like like i don't want to bother you like no bother me ask me questions I want you guys to do that because when I came from Florida, I knew no one. I had no one to talk to about this. Like I had to kind of get myself out there in my cohort and kind of figure out who I could trust and ask questions and who I like was not all that trustworthy or who I could get along with and who I couldn't. It was so hard to like start fresh. And then on top of that, I have to deal with everything that came with the ABSN program. So a year ago, like today, I would say, I wish that I could have had someone to talk to and someone to just kind of like let it all out with. That wasn't my husband, <laughs> poor kid. Anyway, so today I'm gonna be answering your frequently asked questions. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, so my first frequently asked question is, is it hard? Yes. I think I answered this question in another Q&A video that I had filmed during second semester and it was before second semester. So I had just gone through first semester alone and I thought that it was difficult. First semester was, difficulty level was like so-so. I feel like it was very manageable, but again, it was very fast. Like everything was it's just, it just comes at you fast. And I think part of the reason that nursing school is so hard is because, especially this program is because it comes at you so quickly and a lot of contact per exam. So is it hard? Yes. How much does the program cost? A lot of money. Um, this program is about, I would say, after you add tuition, textbooks, uniform, supplemental resources that you're gonna use. Like I, I had to get so many study resources online. I've signed up for like memberships to be able to get into like other things that are like outside of pace. 70 grand plus program costs. But otherwise, it's, it's an accelerated program and it's gonna cost that much because it's, an accelerated program at a private university at that. Like I know that Pace is really well known in the area and a lot of hospitals like to see students from Pace. Oddly enough, this is a really, really common question that I get. What kind of shoes should I get for clinical? The handbook will tell you closed leather shoe so that it's easy to wipe off something super comfortable. And white, they want white shoes. I can tell you that we weren't really yelled at for not having the required shoe. I had, first I had a pair of Reeboks that didn't fit me right. So it was horrendous to go to SimLab in. We didn't really get to go to a lot of clinical because of the pandemic, but it was a closed leather shoe. And if I did get anything on it, it was easy to get off. So I, I, I would say that I recommend that. Second semester I went and I got, well, my husband got me a pair of 
the Adidas Ultra Boost that XO Santana, XO, XO Santana on TikTok actually recommended to me. I did get to talk to her. She's an awesome, awesome nurse. You guys should really check out her channel. I love, love, love her. She has great study tips. Anyway, she recommended the Adidas Ultra Boosts and I got those in white and they're so comfortable. I will say though, I did take them to the OR and I did have to play, put shoe covers and stuff like that. Depending on the case, because I didn't want to get blood, bodily fluids, anything, anything that could get on those shoes. But they are kind of pricey. I would invest in a comfortable pair of shoes. You can't go wrong with it. I know that it's like, oh no, I don't want to get like super expensive shoes for nursing school. But just think about it. Like this will last me through nursing school and into my job or into any other internship or um, what are those called? Um, residency programs that you want to do what grades did you have to make in undergrad to get into the program so i think i don't want to tell you guys the wrong thing um go on pace's website i think that the prereqs you have to get at least a c plus in the prereqs but double check on their website i don't know if they change it every year if they change it per cohort like this program has been like around for a long time so just to double check for your cycle, just check check the website. <laughs> Next question is, do you need, what do you need to pass? Okay, so in order to pass, you need first a 77 average on all of your exams. So how they do it, they don't, they don't calculate grades like you wouldn't calculate grades in undergrad. Like in undergrad, you would say, okay, you need a 70 to pass. Like, a, a C or a, that's it. Yeah, C is three minus anything above a D or something like that for undergrad. So, I mean, that would be cumulative among assignments, exams, quizzes, whatever it is that your class in undergrad was doing. Nursing school is a little bit different. So, nursing school will have you do maybe three or four exams. Within those three or four exams, you have to average a 77. So say you get an 85 one test, a 75 another test, a 95 the next test, but all everything has to add up to 77 or higher. After you get that raw score of a 77 or higher, they add on the assignments and everything else. So your grade will end up going up. So say that you get a 77 flat, which did happen to me. That happened to me this last semester and I nearly like, I crushed me and then you get all of the other assignments add on you end up with a B which is fully acceptable I don't I really don't want you guys to think that I'm a straight-A student because I'm most definitely not I'm probably the most relatable student ever I'm your classic B plus student I got maybe like one or two A's in nursing school oh my god I just spit everywhere oh Anyways, I got maybe like one or two A's in nursing school because I, my brain could not wrap around the speed of the program. And then on top of that, I'm not a great test taker. And I really beat myself up for that. Like it was really, really hard for me to work so hard in studying and not get the grade that I wanted. It, it, it took a toll on me mentally and I just want to sit here and tell you that it is okay. And I don't want people to feel like, oh my God, I'm not getting straight A's. I'm literally gonna suck at being a nurse and blah, 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 blah. That is not true. The exam that counts the most is gonna be your NCLEX. Again, I, I never wanna sit here and give you guys study tips and tell you, oh, I got straight A's on my exams with these study tips, no. Sometimes I got straight A's and sometimes I didn't like score as well. And that's totally normal because of how accelerated this program is, how intense this program is. It's totally normal. And not only that, but like professors will even tell you. My mentor was also the director of the program. And she sat me down and told me that when she was in nursing school, she was a B plus student also. So please <sighs> breathe because I want more than anything for you guys to succeed. And I, and I, and I believe that you will. Okay, next question is does financial aid help you with the cost no <laughs> huh. financial aid doesn't help you with the cost and it sucks 
the only thing that you can do is apply through with financial aid with FAFSA and they'll give you like a federal loan. So you can only pay for the program with a loan or out of your pocket. And if you got money for out of your pocket, I am so happy for you because this is torture. That's that for financial aid covering. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but it is what it is. And if you want your nursing degree, you, just, you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? What happens if you fail a class? So I'm not 100% clear on this. I've kind of like heard this throughout the grapevine of what happens if you fail a class. If you fail one class, you can make it up the following semester, but that's if you fail one. If you fail more than one, they kick you out. And it really sucks um, because I think that you still have to pay, like repay the tuition for that semester. Like they don't like reimburse you for the semester that you failed and you have to redo all of it. But that's not gonna be you guys. You guys are gonna do it and I believe in you. So what is the minimum GPA to stay in? Your minimum GPA is to stay up a 3.0. So that is a B flat. So you can get a B plus in all of your classes and you're gonna be fine. You can get a B in all of your classes and be fine. As long as you stay up that 3.0 average. Okay, the ninth question that I have here is how do I make my application stand out? So I know that this is gonna sound super cliche, but they want a story, okay? They want to know that you've gone through a journey to get up into this point and they want to hear about it so the essay that i wrote i basically explained to them like i came from a communist country which most of you know that i came from cuba um where medical care is universal and it's free however universal and free health care does not always mean good health care and ample amount of resources and all of these other things that come with a socialist dictatorship that is that country. Um, and I did tell them about um, two experiences with my family members that is like kind of really hard for me to talk about. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail because I don't wanna get emotional in a video. But um, I had two of my family members that had gotten sick. And let's just say that they did not get the ample healthcare that they needed and they passed away. And because of this, I really, really, really wanted to strive for healthcare. Like if anything, I think the sole reason that I wanna be a nurse is because of those two family members that went through what they had to go through. It's really hard to sit on this end of the pond and not be able to do anything about it. I wanna be the nurse that takes care of someone's grandfather, grandmother, aunt, aunt uncle um, that is going through something. And I wanna be able to sit by them and let them know that I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that they're healthy and that I have enough resources in my power to do so because my family members didn't get that. And I think that that story really sold um, my application because I was waitlisted. And then after being waitlisted, I was accepted and I was able to choose whether or not I wanted to attend and I wanted to attend. And I'm so glad that I did because now I'm graduated and I'm gonna be taking my NCLEX soon and I'm very excited to start working. <sighs> okay, I'm done being all emotional. Okay. Next question is, how concerned do I need to be for this medication calculation exam slash exams? So you will actually take two medication calculation exams. Many of you have asked me, do I need to prepare prior to going to nursing school for these exams? I mean, you can. I think that the professors, especially the professors that um, is there for fundamentals, is great and you guys will not have any trouble with this medication calculation exam you do need to get a 90 percent or higher on this exam but then you do get two times like if you don't make it the first time they do let you retake it again i haven't had to do that and let me just tell you that i suck at math i'm not a mathematician whatsoever if you ask me to add two numbers in my head, I will literally blink on you. Math is not it for me. I don't know why, I don't know how, just it doesn't work in my head. So 
If I was able to pass with a 90% or higher, you guys got it, I promise. Don't stress about it, just take it very slow. Registered Nurse RN is really good. If you don't get it during class, Registered Nurse RN has medication calculation questions and she has videos on how to do it. You guys, I am so sorry if I'm so jittery. Look at my hands. We just got an espresso machine and I had a double shot of, um, whatchamacallit, double shot of espresso, like with that frothy milk thing. And I'm so hyper right now. So just just bear with my shakiness. I, prom I promise I'm like not going anything through anything neurologically. Just, I'm just jittery. Okay, next question is, how do I study for Patho Farm? So in this program, you guys are lucky enough to get patho and farm in the same course. I know it sounds like, oh my God, that's way too much. I'd rather have them separate. No, 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 no. This is great because you learn about like the pathologic process of the disease first. And then you learn the mode of action of the, the, like the farm that goes with it. And then everything kind of clicks in together. If you know those two things together, the side effects, um, the contraindications, all of that will kind of like fall into place. So if I could give you guys one piece of advice for studying that, study the patho that goes with the medication and the mode of action that comes with the medication because it will just, everything else will just fall into place. I think that study methods really depend on your professors. Cause I know some professors are very like textbook, 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 you gotta read the textbook. Everything that I pull is from the textbook, blah, 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 blah. And you have to read the textbook. Other professors will tell you, read the textbook if you need it, supplement if you need but everything that i pull i will pull from my powerpoint and our path of farm professor was like that so feel out for the professor see how the first exam goes i think that's all that i can really say about that i also really really recommend the what are they called the level up rn flashcards i made a whole video about reviewing those flashcards if you get any deck the pharmacology deck for the flashcards i am going to be studying that like crazy for NCLEX. It's so helpful. These cards just have, it has everything that you need to know about a medication on it. And it's so easy because Pathopharm is such a like soul memory type of course. It's very helpful to just like go through them quickly. Next question is how did you handle the reading assignments? I didn't. <laughs> Don't take my advice. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I think that I used one textbook out of the entire program. And it was only because the professor for that course was very textbook heavy. Her lectures were very dry. She only went over like the key points, but it was up to us to go into in-depth review of these topics in the textbook in order to apply them on the test. So. I think that you should feel out for your professors. If your professors are very cutthroat dry, you gotta read the textbook, then you're gonna have to read the textbook. It's very, it's very overwhelming, I understand. These, these exams are 15 chapters long for these readings and they take quite a bit of time. I remember I did this also for OB. I read all of the chapters for OB, like the first test. And then when I got to the exam, I was like, wow, I saw all of this on the PowerPoint slides. All of these key points came from the PowerPoint slides. So if it's gonna be like that, then you need to hone in on what is actually gonna be on this test. I know that it's like, no, but I really wanna like, absorb all of this information from the textbook but like it's a lot of information and you have a lot of classes so really just prioritize what you need to prioritize i use the textbooks for supplementation and any of you that have messaged me i've told you the same thing supplementation supplementation if there's something in lecture that this professor is talking about and i'm like what the heck are you talking about my guy and i will go back after class look it up in the textbook and see if it starts to make sense. If that doesn't work, then I'll turn to YouTube because YouTube is great. Simple Nursing is great. RegisteredNurseRN.com is absolutely amazing. Okay, next question is, how did you organize class assignments and study time? So because you have so many exams close together, assignments that are back to back, you kind of really have to hone in on a day where you're gonna do assignments. My recommendation is get all the assignments 
as much as you can done in the first few weeks of the semester so that you have more time to study later i used to cram in we, we have like a course point and pass point i used to get try and get all of those done before we were hit with exams so that i didn't have to worry about it for the rest of the semester also group assignments you're gonna get a ton of those really organize yourself with your group we would get together in a meeting in a zoom meeting and we would say okay this part of the project is due on said day we will be meeting or we will be meeting on said day to work on this project and this really allowed for us to focus on finals and hesis hesis are another really big part of everything that you have to take don't know if you guys have switched over to Kaplan since then. This past semester we took Kaplan. And it was really hard. <laughs> I think that it was way harder than Hesse, but... That's just my sole opinion. Another organizational tip that I have that I really did first semester and I wish I would have carried it over into the next semesters is I would dedicate one class a day for readings if I felt like reading, assignments if I had any assignments due, and study time unless i had a exam coming up if i had an exam coming up i would allocate five days prior to that exam on my calendar five to seven days depending on how heavy it was if it was a class that i was doing quite well on and i didn't need to sit down and study for it too much then i would allocate like three days just for that one test i also made a lot of study guides and that, those took me a little while so that's like another reason why i allocated so much time for exams because of these study guides that I used to make. And I will show you guys some of the study guides that I make or that I had made for nursing school that really just, it helped so much. Next question is, were PowerPoint lectures enough to do well on exams? So for the most part, the PowerPoint lectures were very helpful, but I didn't just read the PowerPoint lectures. The PowerPoint lectures definitely contained like information that was important. However, what the professors said out of their mouths was way more important. I, that's why I allocated everything into these study guides because I would write down everything that was on the PowerPoint. And then in between those, I would, anytime that they talked about something, I would write word for word what came out of their mouth. I'm also very audio visual and I felt like that really helped. Like hearing the lecture and also typing out what they were saying just kind of like really embedded everything into my head. Next question is, where can I find good practice questions? Scratch those course point questions because they don't work. I tried that with so many of the subjects and the only subject I think that maybe the course point slash pass point in particular, those questions really helped was for psych. Otherwise, I didn't, I, I, I didn't find them helpful. They were just not, they were not in it. And I know that I'm not the only one that thinks that. So a really good place for practice questions is Quizlet. Quizlet has multiple choice questions from ample amount of textbooks out there. And what this does is that these ample amount of textbook questions allow for like a variety of different forms of the same question, if that makes any sense. Like your professor could ask you a question in a specific phrase and there's millions of questions that are the same exact question with the same exact rationale, but just worded differently. And this really helps because then no matter how the question is asked, you're gonna get it right on your test because it was asked in 17 different words. Another thing with Quizlet is that like, kids use Quizlet to their advantage for studying flashcards and because of this they really hone in on what's going to be important and most of the time that's what's going to be on your test like there's a lot of extra fluff in nursing school that they try to teach you and there's like the really core key concepts that are going to be on NCLEX and are going to be on your exams um another really good place for practice questions is simplenursing.com they have little quizzes that you can take and you can formulate your tests and all of that stuff on there those questions are really really hard if you get those questions right you're set for your test oh my gosh <laughs> i need help guys next question is what hospitals did you do your clinical rotations on and 
this question is kind of saddens me a little bit to be honest because we didn't get to do very much we got to do depending on where you were in the program like two hospitals and that was only because of covid otherwise we would have had lots of hospital experience and i'm that's the only reason why i'm really like dang i think that maybe pace should have lowered their tuition for us this semester because all of our clinical experience was through a simulation on the computer with a make-believe patient and as much as like the process is the same me clicking buttons is not doing absolutely anything um, and that was really discouraging and i know that me and my cohort kind of feel that we're unprepared going on into the nursing world because of that so getting back to the actual root of the question i'm sorry hospitals that we did was memorial sloan kettering for covid vaccine clinic and new york presbyterian so some people did what's it called northwell depending on where you wanted to go for your preceptorships i like had to rank what you wanted and they would throw you in wherever you wanted i wanted to precept in the er however i got or and it actually ended up being one of the most amazing experiences shout out to my preceptor you're amazing we still talk and i am very excited about aura nursing i really wanted to go in to er and now i'm kind of changing my trajectory because or is just pretty awesome so those are the only two hospitals that i was able to precept at or to do clinical rotation at this question is did these hospitals offer you employment after graduating no <laughs> they didn't offer me employment after graduating but i was very much encouraged to apply so I'm not really sure if that's considered offering me a job. If anything, the nurses there were very encouraging, like, oh, you should apply. Like, you're like very energetic. I feel like you're very good with patients. You would really fit in here. Like, you should apply to work at this hospital. I never got like a manager that was like sitting me down, like, let's schedule an interview date because I really want you to work here type of thing. But I'm sure that it will come. Okay, next question is, are you required to take an exam from PACE before you're allowed to take the NCLEX? Um, so you took, oh my gosh. You can tell it's my first day back in two months. But you are required to take an exit exam. However, it's not an exit exam that if you don't pass this exit exam or you don't get past a certain percentile on this exit exam, you will not graduate. I know that some programs are like that, PACE is not as of right now. I don't know what they're gonna be like in the next year, but I wanna ease your mind because this Kaplan that you're gonna take in third semester is only 10% of your grade and that's all you have to worry about. Next question is, besides nursing care plans, are there a lot of assignments? Yes and no. So first semester, I feel like there wasn't many assignments. There were just like lots of group work like lots of group presentation projects due at the end of the semester. Semester two was also a lot of group work. Third semester, I was drowning in assignments. I think that, <laughs> I don't know why, why, why would they do such a thing? Third semester was just a hot mess. It was a lot of exams back to back, not as rigorous as second semester, but I feel like they were like, you know what? We're gonna make this hard. So we're gonna throw out an extra assignments at you and it sucked. So nursing care plans, a lot in semester two, not so many in semester three, and I feel like none in semester one. I think I didn't do any care plans semester one. They're not too bad, I promise. They take a little while, but they're not gonna take you six hours. Okay, next question. Did a lot of people end up dropping out or not making it? from my cohort yeah so not a ton i would we started off with like a class of maybe like 68 and i know maybe a handful or two handfuls that didn't make it but like i don't really know who from the original cohort actually went through the whole thing 
if that makes any sense because second and third semester there were definitely people from previous cohorts that were then making up so i don't know exactly how many of us from the original fall 2020 group actually made it through the whole thing but the majority of us did and i don't want people to get discouraged because they're like oh there's people that didn't make it because life happens many of these students had a lot going on in their personal lives we were going through a pandemic it, it was just a lot going on at once and the program by itself without a pandemic is stressful with the pandemic it was extra stressful so don't get discouraged because i'm telling you that some people didn't make it there's always gonna be someone that doesn't and unfortunately that's the sad reality of going through something this rigorous and this mentally draining nursing program last question how did you make your study guides for nursing school so i answered this earlier so what i did was i wrote down everything on the powerpoint slides and then everything that came out of the professor's mouth this is a final exam booklet that i made with staples i don't recommend you do it it's so expensive i literally did not <laughs> i did not calculate how much this was gonna be okay i went there and i asked this lady to print all of my study guides out into a booklet and the total came out to like 40 bucks and she actually discounted that price for me because i was stressing out i think the original price was gonna be like a hundred something dollars so Definitely don't recommend it. This is my med surge study guide. I really hope that you guys can see what this is like. So I basically wrote down everything that she said in my handwriting, whatever I didn't pick up from the lecture the first time that I wrote the study guide. Cause sometimes I do that. Like I would listen to the lecture, I would miss things. So then when I would print it out and then re-listen to the lecture, I could write things in. I did lots, lots of re-listening. So this is what it looks like. I wrote everything that I could down and highlighted a bunch of stuff. Also what I did, we had this system for our med surge, what's it call it? For our med surge textbook that we had to do assignments on. It, very similar to course, course point, lip and cut, all of that stuff. But if I found a question that was very, very relatable to the material that we were learning and like straight out of the material that we were learning, I would write it down. So this is like, for example, Davis question. And I would write down the rationale for the question in my study guide. And I feel like it really solidified everything that I was learning because when you apply your learning, it's very great. So this is like one mode that I would do the study guides in. Another mode that I would do the study guides in is in this Cornell method. So I would write down the topic on one side, you would make a table and split into two. And topic on one side, and then all of the information that I needed to know on the other side. And I would separate it out by nursing diagnosis. So nursing diagnosis was so big in med surge. If you knew the nursing diagnosis, you could figure out everything else. Let me show you. This is an example of the muscular drift. Oh my gosh. Wow, you graduate nursing school and you spend a couple months without looking at menstrual stuff and then you can pronounce the things. So muscular dystrophies. So I did a box for patho, a box for clinical manifestations with like your, your symptoms, all of the things that go on in your body when you have this sort of um, disease or disorder or condition. The management, what can we do as nurses or what can the doctor prescribe that is going to help us treat this disease, condition, disorder, etc. Um, complications that can occur, nursing diagnosis, the interventions, and then I think that's it. Oh, and then teaching. Teaching is also very, very big in med surge. So that would be like one huge table that I would create for each disorder. So that's med surge. OB, I didn't really do this for OB. I did more of the classic note for OB. As you can see, I just, I wrote down a bunch of stuff. I put down the definitions, my own notes based on what my professor was saying. Pediatrics, I kind of did in both modes. 
I did in the regular mode and then I think later on I did the other yes and then on the other side I did the Cornell method as well I also did print out some of the simple nursing study guides back here just for my own reference those study guides are so great i recommend them They're so visually just incredibly nice to look at this is an example of the study guides and you can access this by getting a membership with simple nursing for nursing school so i told myself you know what i can spend the extra dollars for a membership if it means that i'm gonna do better this is an example of those highly 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 recommend it like even if you're not gonna print them out just look at them they're great apart from the study guides i also use other resources to study this is another really great resource um i know that you guys have probably seen this so many times that your brain is hurting but this is great like it really just solidifies everything that's in your textbook into like a list form and just get it just just get it so a couple things before i go i did tell you guys that i was going to do a giveaway at 100 subscribers and then i went mia for two months and then now there's 208 of you as of last night so now i gotta do a giveaway with two winners instead of one because you guys it's 200 i know that it doesn't sound like a lot but I really didn't think that I would end up with 200 people following me and you guys DMing me questions and me having to still make videos and being excited about making videos and doing all that stuff. So I really do want to thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. And because you guys are so supportive, I want to give back to you guys. Okay, so for the giveaway, you guys, I am going to be giving away these headbands from amazon now you know that i'm obsessed with these headbands i love them so this is what they look like they say nurse with a little stethoscope and they have buttons for your masks and they're great and they come in blue gray and black i wore the black one because i threw this in the washing machine after a hard day of me sweating in the or and I, it the white got so don't throw them in the washing machine we'll be giving these away and there will be two giveaway winners i think i'm gonna make the rules be subscribed to my channel like this video and comment down below just something comment down below how you're feeling about nursing school how you're feeling about graduating how you're feeling as a nurse how you're feeling just with life right now or give me a compliment or tell me that i suck or i don't know <laughs> I'm going to be randomizing these things so you can literally just comment whatever you like on this video. I will be reading through your comments. I will try to get through all of them. Not like I'm gonna get like a kajillion, but you know, you know what I mean. So till next time, I will be cluster recording today because I need to get a bunch of videos out for you guys. So stay tuned and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you, thank you so much. And good luck with your semester if you're starting the semester and congratulations. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Bye.